Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to lay out the key reasons of why you should and should not do a PhD. So if you're thinking of doing one, you need to watch this video to understand the pros and cons to help you make that all important life decision. A quick disclaimer, this video is based off my own experience completing a PhD at Cambridge in the UK. Starting off, it's super important to first ask the question of what do you actually do in a PhD? So I'm first going to condense four years into one minute by explaining what you do in a PhD. In a PhD, your goal is to discover something new about the world and expand human knowledge. This could be a new theory of physics, new cancer therapy, anything. Now, it depends on the subject, but you'll probably first collect data through doing experiments, taking samples, you'll analyze that data, maybe write some code, visualize the results, and then try and interpret that evidence. At this point, you might actually realize you screwed things up, you have to go back, redo experiments, do more analysis. You'll iterate a lot of times until eventually you have enough solid evidence to demonstrate something new about the world. You'll then go to your supervisor, They'll say, write a paper. You'll write a paper. It's basically a long report, takes a lot of time. You'll submit it to a journal to be published. The journal might reject you. You might have to rewrite it, submit it somewhere else, and then finally it should get accepted. And you might write a few papers throughout the PhD. After three to seven years, you'll write a thesis, basically a big book, which describes all the things that you did and what you found. Throughout, you might also go to a few conferences to present a poster and talk to other researchers. All of this really depends on the subject area, but this is kind of the average. So overall, a PhD is basically a job doing research. So that's roughly what a PhD looks like. We'll now talk about pros and cons, starting off with the bad. Con one, a PhD is stressful and mentally taxing. Part of this comes down to unpredictability. So for example, your experiments might not work. You might spend years and years trying to get them to work and they might just not. And if they do work, you might not find anything interesting. Journals might reject your paper. So all throughout there's uncertainty and risk in the research process, which is particularly tough because all of it feels like a reflection of your personal ability when it's just that risk. These factors put together, plus others we'll get to, mean it's unsurprising rates of depression and anxiety in PhD students are six times higher than the general population. So really worth considering this. This leads to con two, social isolation. Now, it does vary a lot, but in a PhD, you might be away from your hometown, your undergraduate friends, your research also might mean you have little contact time with others. For me, I routinely had weeks on end where I would be in a basement with no lights on, just by myself doing little laser experiments um, for like 12 hours a day, and yeah, it, it kind of sucked, it was pretty bad. Now luckily I did have a very good uni like socially and I had a great support network, but that's not the case everywhere. And the social isolation of research can be really draining and can impact mental health. Con three, poor management. In a PhD, you'll have a supervisor as your boss, typically a lecturer or a professor, and they will usually be a terrible manager. They will not respond to emails, not give you help, not meet with you. I heard some stories where people don't meet their supervisor for like six months. They won't have had any training in managing people and there's little oversight from the university. But they're the person who has all the power over you. They decide when you can graduate, where and what you can publish. They hold influence over your job prospects. So on one hand, you have this terrible manager, but they have all the power over you. And it's absolutely true that some supervisors abuse that power. So I would massively stress if you're considering a PhD, meet and chat with your potential supervisor, talk to past and current students to really understand what it's actually like in that research lab. Super important. On the topic of exploitation, long hours. Now, ultimately it is kind of up to you, but for many, the hours are long in a PhD, um, often all-nighters, weekend work, and this can come from, you know, the nature of the work, maybe experiments just take a long time, but also the academic pressure to succeed. Which brings us to compensation. Now you might be putting in these long hours that blood, sweat and tears, and the pay you get out will likely be pretty bad. Depends on the country, so in EU they mostly pay you, in other places your scholarship or lab will give you a stipend. For me I got 14k pounds per year, uh, which in the UK is sh and this can all be frustrating. You're putting in all that effort and your friends are at corporate jobs, like at McKinsey, uh, telling clients to increase revenues and decrease costs and then collecting 200k. So it's not great and don't expect to be very Gucci uh, throughout your PhD. Okay, so you're doing a stressful, isolating job with poor management, low pay, long hours. What does a PhD give you afterwards that makes it all worth it? Well, don't get too excited. In most cases, 
if you move out of academia, you will be competing for the same roles as someone with just a bachelor's or a master's. I don't make the rules, this is just how it is. But what's more, if you had not done the PhD and gone straight into a job, you would have had a few promotions by now. Now there is research suggesting that late in your career you might catch up and get promotions faster. Maybe it's because of the skills from the PhD or the clout of having those two little letters next to your name. But I think it's fair to say that if you're transitioning out of academia, there will be an initial economic penalty which you will only maybe recuperate later in life. Now, obviously this is super situational and person specific and it will vary. Uh, you could definitely spend a whole PhD analyzing whether doing a PhD would you know, improve your economic outcomes. As a final con, and this is something myself and a lot of my friends felt, is that you may start to feel that the research you're doing is very niche and won't have a big impact on the real world, at least not in the short term. For me, I was doing this very niche research into making organic solar panels. And you know, if I have to be honest, the subtleties of how exciton phonon couplings can drive long range energy transfer in organic semiconductors uh, through non adiabatic couplings you know, is probably not gonna change the world. Um, you know, and if there's gonna be any impact, it's gonna take decades. And climate change, you know, is something we need action on right now. We don't have decades. So that was a big motivator for me to, you know, get out of the ivory tower and, and into the real world. Now, I do appreciate that not all of you will mind this aspect too much, and there is something you know very important about fundamental research, but if you are quite mission oriented and want to see the impact of your work in the real world, this is worth bearing in mind. Okay, so that was a lot of cons. Are the pros going to outweigh them? Pro number one, if you want to become an academic, so a professor or a scientist or a researcher, having a PhD is basically a job requirement. So obviously getting that PhD opens up those opportunities. Now, of course, this pro only applies if you actually want to become those things. And I should mention that on the academic front, you know, not everyone wants to become a professor. While it is true that academics have this amazing intellectual freedom, it's also true that many academics these days spend a lot more of their time doing admin, teaching, writing grants, than they actually do doing research. Also, to become one, you'll probably have to do two to three two-year postdocs, basically temporary research positions, just to even be competitive to become a professor. And each time you do a postdoc, you have to kind of uproot your life in the process when you maybe have to move country or city. Now, outside of academia and industry or public sector, having a PhD might not necessarily be a job requirement to become a scientist or researcher, but it's still certainly a good investment, basically a badge of certification that you know how to do research and not having one might mean it's quite difficult to advance past a certain level. Pro number two, social mobility. This one is my favorite. Getting a PhD is a chance to boost your opportunities in life in a way that might have been very difficult otherwise. What do I mean by this? Well, for me, I grew up in New Zealand. I went to a fairly average high school. It was okay, but they didn't you know, prepare us for any prestigious universities or anything like that. And I just went to my local university for undergraduate. And it was fine, but when I got there, I realized, okay, there's more prestigious universities out there. And I worked hard, got good grades, got a scholarship to Cambridge. And to be frank, having a PhD from Cambridge opens up opportunities in a way that I wouldn't have had otherwise. I wouldn't have my current job, for example. So the way to think about this is that going from high school to undergrad, bachelor's, maybe master's, PhD, even postdoc, every time you move up that educational ladder, you can move up in terms of institutional prestige of that university and open up opportunities for yourself in the process. If you work hard enough and get good, good enough grades, of course. Another aspect is that having a PhD is potentially a way to earn permanent residency and get citizenship in another country. Now, of course, this overall pro doesn't apply so much if you're already at a great school for undergraduate. One of the best parts of doing a PhD is that it's an opportunity to pursue a problem or subject that you're truly passionate about. So for me, an undergraduate, I found quantum mechanics and all the ideas in that truly fascinating. And I really wanted to learn more about the subject. Um, I realized 
I'm basically a total physics nerd. Um, you know, words like exciton phonon couplings and superposition are basically dirty words for me. But whatever gets you going, no judgment here, doing a PhD is a chance to really explore and immerse yourself deeply in a subject and basically become one of the world's leading experts in that area. Finally, a PhD is an amazing way to have an international experience. A big part of this is that there's a lot of scholarships for international students to go overseas, which is less true for masters. And on the job market, often there can be a lot of visa restrictions. A PhD is also great because you become part of a university and you have an opportunity to hopefully develop a community of you know, like-minded people who are also international, also doing PhDs, very you know, interested by ideas. And a lot of these people will become your closest friends, really cool, amazing people. Also just being in another country is super fun and interesting. Another bonus, you get to go to international conferences. So this is one of the really fun parts bringing everything together, how do you decide between the cons of a PhD being stressful, isolating, poor management, long hours, low pay, opportunity cost, lack of immediate impact, quite a lot of cons to be fair, uh, versus the pros of enabling a research career, social mobility, pursuing a passion, international experience, uh, how do you decide? Well, how much do you feel these factors are important to you? So I'll take myself as an example. For me, I really wanted to travel the world. I loved physics, really wanted to get into a good university after my undergraduate, and I at least somewhat thought about being an academic. And I also wasn't really too phased about the tougher parts of a PhD that I'd heard about. So for me, it was a no brainer. And looking back, I'm really happy that I did it, partly because of that social mobility aspect. But I can imagine if you're already in a great school for undergraduate, have good career options, don't really see yourself becoming an academic, then maybe doing a PhD won't benefit you that much. And there's a big opportunity cost as well of just going straight into industry. Alternatively, maybe you found undergraduate really difficult from a well-being and a mental health standpoint. In that case, I would seriously consider not doing a PhD because doing a PhD is going to stress those aspects even more. If I had to come up with a decision structure, I would say vaguely at least two out of four or ideally three out of four of the pros should feel like they really apply to you, that they're really important things for you, and that also at least none of the cons are going to be seriously bad triggers for you or you at least feel like they're going to be surmountable. If you're unsure on the balance, there's also the possibility of a master's or shorter research projects to test out how much you like research. Worst case, you can also switch your PhD to a master's if you decide partway through you don't really like it. I would also say the balance of these factors is location specific. So if you're looking at the US, PhDs take there on average six years, whereas four years for the UK, for instance. So in that case for US, those pros are going to have to be even more outweighing the cons. That wraps it up. Hope this video was useful. Let me know in the comments, do you agree, disagree with these pros and cons? Are there any that I've missed? And also a quick plug for my videos where I interview students about their PhD experiences and also how they manage mental health. Cheers guys.